Hello YouTube. Uh, in today's video I want to talk about the Chaos Game. This is a very uh, interesting mathematical game which has a very unexpected outcome if you haven't seen it before. Uh, so we'll look at that and then uh, after that I also want to talk about how this relates to learning to code. Uh, but we'll come to that later. So what you see on screen here is uh, a web page I've set up to implement the, the Chaos Game. There are others online that you can find as well. And what the Chaos Game is, is uh, you start with a number of points in a triangle, in this case. And you pick a point at random. And then you repeatedly pick one of these three corners and then move halfway from your current location to the corner that you chose. And then you choose another corner and you move halfway from where you ended up to that corner and then you just keep going and keep going so you can see how this works if I click on the one point button here you can see we started off the first point was up in the corner here the algorithm obviously chose this bottom left corner and the point here has moved halfway down towards that corner so we do one more so now it's gone halfway from that point to this corner now it's gone halfway to the bottom left again. And you get the idea, it's now gone over towards the bottom right. It's gone further towards the bottom right and further still. Getting a little quite close to the bottom right hand corner now. Uh, but now it's moved back towards the bottom left. And the idea really is to imagine what's going to happen. So you can see the rules, very, very simple. Um, it looks like this point's just gonna bounce around at random within this triangle. So let's keep going a bit further. I'll click this button here to do the next 50 points all at once. It still looks pretty random. Nothing too interesting going on here. We'll keep going. I'll keep clicking this button, filling in. And you can start to see something's not quite random anymore. We'll keep going, keep filling this in. And something quite strange happens. So there's a big space in the middle here, an inverted triangle, where the point seems to avoid. It never never ends up in this point for some reason. And there's a smaller triangle here and a smaller one down here as well. So let's keep going. I'll do a thousand points at once now. And you can see that's exactly what happens. We get this very, very ordered pattern emerging out of this uh, very simple random algorithm. Uh, this pattern, as you can see, is what we can basically describe this as, is uh, that the original triangle has been broken down into four smaller versions of itself. So there's a, a smaller version on the top here, a smaller version on the left, and a smaller version on the right. And a similar size piece in the middle here inverted that is completely blank. And if you look at each, look at just the top triangle here, the same is true of this top triangle. It is also made up of three smaller triangles on the top, the left and the right with a blank in the middle and so on as you go, th go down. So this is, a, this is a fractal. And this is actually known as the Sierpinski triangle. If we look at the Wikipedia page, for the chaos game. We can see the same thing appearing here. And we can also link into the, uh, the Sierpinski triangle page and you can read all about this uh, later on if, if you want to. I'll put links to all these pages in the, uh, in the video description. So this is a very well known phenomenon and there's all sorts of uh, variations on this that you can also play with. Um, by fiddling with the, the the algorithm slightly having more or less points so if we go back to the to my web page here let's first of all just reset on the triangle and we'll try using some very small points instead of the the big black dots i was using before we can just fill in very gradually you can see it's very faintly building up as we fill in more and more points now that we're drawing very small points on the screen, you can see even more detail in the structure. 
going down from this big triangle in the middle here to a, a smaller one and a smaller one and goes on to infinity effectively. But uh, what happens if we move these dots around a little bit? So let's try a random triangle instead. So now the three dots aren't a regular equilateral triangle anymore. But we, if we fill in some points, we'll find, not too surprisingly, we just get a distorted version of the same thing. That's kind of what you'd expect, really. Uh, what about if we try a rectangle? So now we've got four regular points at the corners. So uh, you might expect now, if your intuition's been uh, challenged slightly, you might expect to see some kind of pattern with blank rectangles appearing in here. But uh, if I fill in a few points or a few hundred thousand points, we see actually when you do this with a rectangle with four points in the corners, there's no fractal appears. It's just a random field of dots with no discernible pattern. So that's not very interesting. But now let's try a random quadrilateral. So again, it's just four points, but not symmetrically spaced. If we fill this in, now we find there is some interesting structure again. And you can fill this in further and further. There's quite a lot of a lot of structure involved here. I think what's basically happening is you can imagine this as being four separate Sierpinski triangles overlaid on each other and uh, some areas are still completely empty, some areas are more heavily filled in. And uh, you're getting the, the sum of several Sierpinski triangles all overlaid on each other. So I hope you find this uh, chaos game interesting and uh, I've made all the uh, the code for this available online if you'd like to experiment with it more and uh, write your own version of it and let's see how it works. Um, so the code is available on, on GitHub. There'll be links in the uh, description for this video and uh, it's very, very simple code. As you can see here, it's just about a couple of hundred lines of JavaScript a uh, very short uh, HTML file, which can, contains this uh, canvas element, which is the key to the whole thing really, and a style sheet, which mainly deals with trying to keep the thing uh, working on different sized devices. This canvas element is what I wanted to talk about uh, as it relates to learning to code, because uh, I first came across this uh, chaos game in the early 80s when computers were still quite new and uh, we had a BBC Model B computer which uh, was a very popular home computer in the UK at that time. Uh, but these things were incredibly simple. There was no internet back then, very, very simple, limited graphics. Uh, so there wasn't a huge amount you could do and people like me spent a lot of time tinkering with these things, just drawing shapes on the screen and, and, and sort of messing about, learning what the machine could do and uh, developing more and more complex programs and learning how to write complex programs in order to make sort of more interesting patterns. And there's actually a JavaScript emulator for the BBC computer on the screen that you'd be presented with in those days. And uh, there wasn't a huge amount you could do. You could basically draw lines. So we could say move to position 10, 10 and draw a line to 200, 300, for example. And the computer just draws a, a line on, on the screen. So this may not seem very exciting, but that's the basics that, that you need to develop all kinds of uh, interesting things just by building up more and more complex programs. Uh, so I've got one very... Uh, simple program already written into the uh, the emulator here just a five line program but when you run this it generates quite a an interesting shape um, it's just drawing straight lines but a, a curve appears from the straight lines so this kind of thing 
it's a great way to learn to code, I think. And learning to code is a, a big uh, a big deal today. Uh, but uh, a lot of the ways people try to learn to code is, I think they're just too complicated, uh, you know, trying to learn web programming or trying to learn to program an Arduino or even is still more complex than just doing this kind of very simple stuff. And uh, writing very simple JavaScript to draw onto a canvas on a web page is I think much more in the spirit of the way that we learned to program back in the in the eighties, just doing these very simple graphical toys, having a ball bouncing around the screen or a, a, a bouncing line to make interesting patterns. So if you're keen to learn to code, or if you're someone who is trying to teach people to code, um, why not give this uh, this sort of technique a, a, a try? T download this code. Uh, take it as a starting point and see what you can do with uh, a few lines of JavaScript and see what kind of uh, interesting patterns and uh, shapes you can you can make appear on the screen. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did please uh, leave a comment and uh, just uh, click on the like button and thanks very much for watching.